Today we geek out about the rat catcher. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Lee with Geek City USA here, and today we're going to talk about a game published by Platypus Industries called The Rat Catcher. Now this is a game that's on Kickstarter right now, and in this game you take on the role of a rat catcher that's goal in life is to take down your nemesis rat, their peculiar rat buddies, and their nasty brood of brown, black, and white rats, or you're just going after 10 pieces of magical cheese before they get there. But if they take those pieces of cheese from you, or they bite you to death, you're gonna lose. I'm gonna take you over here, I'll give you a brief overview on how the game is played, then we'll come back and I'll give you my thoughts on the game. Now this is the Rat Catcher. Now first things first, keep in mind that everything that you're looking at here is a prototype copy, so these components and art and some of the gameplay mechanics may be subject to change in the final version, so definitely check out the Kickstarter page to, uh, to see what the final version will look like. Now let's get started with setup. The first thing you're going to do is select what rat catcher you want to play as. Do you want to play as Professor Fume or Miss Black or maybe Madam Cage? And there's also the good old Pied Piper. Now one thing to note too, that each player is going to have their own asymmetrical powers or their own rather unique abilities. They'll have different health, they'll have different attributes here, uh, they might have a better trap or a different trap, and different yellow and pink powers. Once you choose which character you want, in this case, let's just take the good old Pied Piper, you will take their matching character at this point. This is this uh, cutout miniature here, this little meeple. And you could set the other ones aside. And then you're going to set up your player card. Now the first thing you're going to do is you could fill up your dice to the active number of dice. In this case, you'll see here that there are four spots that are highlighted as not surrounded by cheese. So these are your starting dice. These you can unlock with cheese upgrades later on in the game. So you give yourself those four dice. You're gonna set your health to the proper starting area, right where the star is. You'll look here and you'll see how many traps you start out the game with. In this case, we'll have three. We'll set them next to the player board. And then finally, you'll take the black cube and set it right here, marking how many movement spaces you have in a turn. In this case, this player has five. You're also going to want to set this Tallyman card next to your player area. So wherever you're going to play, you'll set that card around it as well. And this is going to be where the captured rats sit. And you also have this turn reference card, which shows you both the rat catcher's turn as well as the rat turn. And you can set this by your player board as well. Next, you're going to select what nemesis rat you want to play against. On this side here, we have the Rat King, but also with the prototype, we also have the Broodmother. In this case, we'll start with the brood, brood mother. We'll take that character, that uh, nemesis token here, and then we're going to take a red cube and put it on the star where the heart is. That's the starting health for the brood mother. It's also probably helpful to keep this card close by to your nemesis board. This shows you the attributes of each of the different rat types. And these will change or can change as the game goes on. So it's generally a good idea to kind of keep it close by just so that way if you have to make any changes, you can put the little upgrade tokens on the areas if you get any upgrades to those, uh, to those types of rats. Now we're going to build out our city. You're going to find the township card that's marked double zero. Now this, in this case, it's double sided. So it stands out from the rest of the township cards. But you're going to put that in the middle of the table. And because we have this Roman numeral two here, we're going to draw two cards from our township deck in order to build out this city. So we'll flip the first one and let's say you're going to want to connect where these connectors are. So we'll just, let's just say for this sake, we'll go here on that side and then we'll draw another card here off the top. And this one will make the uh, township or the city maybe go, let's, let's make it like that. So we have our starting city in place here. The next thing you want to do is populate the township cards. So you're going to start and if you look here, there's a little potion. So there's a purple potion, so we'll put a purple cube there. And we're going to have our cheese, the magical cheese. This is the crux of the game. This is what both the rat catchers want as well as the rats. It's the magical cheese. 
and now we are going to start putting the rats out. So you'll look and there's these little rat icons throughout the board. So we're going to draw from the rat sack randomly and put rats out on the board. Some of these rat locations have this little arrow here. That means this is a rat nest and turn after turn, whenever the rat's turn is over, you are going to spawn more rats at those locations. Now let's go ahead here. Each rat type is going to spawn, uh, some of them can spawn differently, but let's walk through this here. So we'll start here, we're gonna need two, so we'll put one there, there's a brown rat, and here's a black rat. Now whenever you draw a black rat from the spawn bag, you're going to draw another rat. So here we, we're gonna need two, oh, so I picked two up at it, I picked three up, so let's try that one again. So we're gonna draw two, here's one. It's a black rat, so we have to draw another one. We drew another black rat, so we have to draw another one. There's a white rat, whoops. And now for that other spot, we have a white rat. Now you see instantly we're doing setup and we already have a whole bunch of extra rats here that we didn't plan on. Draw one for here, now we go here. We'll go to the, to the nest here. We'll put two where the cheese happens to be right now. So we're, we're doing better. There's not as many black rats being spawned. So I'm happy about that. And one here, one here. Two here, there's one, there's two, and then in the last spot, we have another white rat. Now sometimes when you're populating a city, or a township rather, you have all these different options. Some of them have this question mark logo. And if you have that, you are going to draw randomly one of these question mark tokens. Uh, some of these are good, you know, some of these might have another potion, some of these might not. So let's flip one at random. Let's say this was a card we were filling. In this case, I drew another rat spawn point, another rat's nest. See here's the potions. Um, there's also, there's a yellow potion. This here is a peculiar rat and we'll touch on that here in a little bit. And we have cheese, so you might have an extra spot of cheese. And there's also a health in here. There you go, a health token. So you see you have a lot of different options and a lot of different randomization that can happen as you're setting up this game. And now we're ready to play the rat catcher. So let's go ahead and we're going to put our Pied Piper right there on the start space. So what is the goal of this game? The goal as the rat catcher is to go through and to pick up 10 pieces of this magical cheese. Now, in order to do so, you need to go into that space when there's no rats there and you can just pick it up, put it on your board, it lets you upgrade a stat on your board. Uh, another way to win is to defeat the nemesis rat, in this case the brood mother. But to start the game, the brood mother or the nemesis is not out on the board. Now the way to lose the game and get comfortable with that is for the rats to collect enough cheese that the rats get up to rats win or to take enough bites as a rat catcher where you lose your health. So in this case, two bites and this Pied Piper is gonna be down and out, down for the count. So you have to go both for the cheese as well as take out those rats and protect yourself. Otherwise you're in a lot of trouble. So on a rat catcher's turn, you're gonna have a lot of options here. Here is our selection of movements and everything. You can move, you can manage your attack dice, you can lay a trap, and you can collect cheese. And also, if you have unlocked any of these special powers, you can do those actions as well. So let's start by talking about movement. Let's move that back up there. We start with five in this case. So you can move freely from zone to zone within a township card. One thing to keep in mind, if you ever move into a zone with a brown rat, when you go to move out of it, those rats are gonna to try to bite you because if you look here, each rat type has a different thing that they look for. The white rats, this is their speed, this is their defense, how hard they bite, and what their target is. So in this case, the white rats are just going for cheese and the black rats are just going for cheese as well. They're not gonna bite you. Black rats are a little bit tougher and they have the thing where they spawn multiple rats. But these brown rats, they are very quick, they move with two movement, and they also bite you for one, and they, uh, they target the rat catcher. So in this instance here, if I were to move into this location and choose to move out of it, that, mo that mouse is gonna bite me for one. You would look here at your defense, in this case the Pied Piper has zero, I would take one bite if I moved out of there. Say I was playing as Madam Cage, Madam Cage has one, one defense there, so if this was Madam Cage, Madam Cage could freely move out and not have to worry get, about getting bit. But in this case, the Pied Piper is a little bit more delicate and more susceptible to being bitten and eaten alive.
So always keep that in mind as you're moving. So let's say, for example, let's just do a quick turn and say, I want to focus on that cheese there. So I'm going to move one, I'm moving to that zone. Now I could fight that mouse if I want to, that rat. I don't really care because that rat is not going for anything. You want to get this cheese before the rats do. And if the rats at the end of the rat turn, or rather at the after the rat movement and everything, if there are ever five or more rats in a zone with cheese, in this case there's four, the rats will claim that cheese and you will be in trouble because that is just moving them up here and getting them one step closer to winning. So in this case, let's, let's not go after this piece of cheese. I'll go into here, so let's say I move there for one, and then for my next move, I'm gonna go into this zone here. Now I'm in this zone with all these rats. I can't collect that cheese because there's rats there, so this is where I get to use my attack dice. So what I'll do is I wanna roll some dice, and you look here, and my accuracy is four plus. That means every time I roll a four or higher, I do one damage. So in this case, there are four rats. I'm really gonna want to roll all four of these dice because I'm gonna end up needing to do so anyway. So let's roll all four here. And you'll see I rolled two twos, which do me no good, and I rolled a four and a five. So I have an option here. So that is essentially two hits. Now with that hit, if I look here, I could take out two white rats because one hit would kill it, it can't block it. If you look at these black rats here, they have a defense value of one. So one hit would tie that, I don't break that, so I would need two. So I would have to do two damage in order to kill that black rat or capture that black rat. The only exception to that is if you roll a six. Now a six is a mortal wound and that's an instant wound no matter what. So, and that's very important. Whenever you roll a six, you could just take that guy right out. That's an immediate wound, which is very helpful when it comes here when you're fighting the nemesis rats. Cause you see, like in this case, they have four that you'll have to, you're gonna have to roll really well in order to do damage to that nemesis rat. But again, if you can roll the sixes or there's all other modifiers that might make it so you, you know, a, a mortal wound might be a five or a six, depending on, the rat catcher that you're playing on. So you definitely get options to mess with that. But in this case, we rolled two twos, a four and a five. So let's say we're gonna remove two white rats. We'll put them there in the tally man cage. Now on our turn, we're out of dice. One thing we can always do is if we have enough rats, we could trade them in. If we trade in three of them, we get an, immediately get another attack dice that we can use right then and there. Uh, you're not gonna save them from turn to turn, you're gonna use it right away. If you get seven, you get to take one of these potions. So if at any point when you collect a cheese, you play it here, you see how the, these two have the little keys that are locked? But if you were to put a cheese there and unlock it because you grabbed yourself a cheese, that would fill up and you would have that potion. Right, So you would be able to use this power, whatever this is, whatever kind of attack it is, and so on. So in this case here, you could turn in seven rats to refill one of these cubes. Another option here is if you have 10 rats, you can heal a health. You can never go higher than the health you start with, or the health you've unlocked. So in this case, you start with two. If I was down here and I, I were to uh, trade in 10 rats, I could move up one, but I couldn't move up to that one unless I had a cheese to unlock that extra health, at which point I'd be able to turn in another 10 and move up there as well. Here, if I turn in 12 rats, it's pretty self-explanatory. You get to take a yellow cube if you've unlocked that. I'll clear that. And finally, if you could save up to 18 rats, you could turn those in and you can get yourself an extra cheese, which is very helpful if you could be patient and save the rats. Until you have 18 of them, that's definitely gonna help you in your quest to, uh, to defeat these rats. Now, I'm not gonna be able to take this cheese because I haven't cleared out that zone. So let's talk about laying some traps. Now, when you put out a trap, you are going to pay the cost of movement uh, plus the trap. So in this case, the Pied Piper has three traps, so I can lay up to three traps a turn. So I would have to pay one movement to lay this trap. And you can lay it in your zone or any zone that you're adjacent to. So in this case, I'm gonna put a trap in here where I'm at, and I'll put a trap in, um, let's say, it's kind of a bummer area to be in because if I put a trap here, they're gonna move this next turn anyway. Because my trap here says, this trap's attack value is equal to the highest level of rat in the target zone. So X equals common only, or 
<laughs> rather common only equals two, peculiar rats is four, and nemesis rat is six. So my attack value is going to be two, so I'll only be able to roll two dice. Now if I had this nemesis rat that was in the zone where a trap was, let's say I put a trap here and the nemesis came into there, well then that nemesis I would get to four, roll uh, six dice. But there is no nemesis rat there just yet. So what I'll also do, I'm going to go ahead and spend another movement point. I'll put another trap there. And I think there, that's really about it. I'm not going to be able to do anything with this last movement. I could lay another trap, but honestly, it's not going to trigger based on the way the rats are going to move. And you'll see that in just one second. So now we're going to go to the rat's turn. So you can flip over this card, and this is going to show you the order that the rats activate in, and then what they do. So you're going to start with the nemesis rats, then you'll do the peculiar rats, and then your regular rats. And then they'll move. After they move, the traps are going to trigger, the rats will bite, then they'll try and eat cheese, and then you're going to respawn some more rats. So let's go through that a little bit slower. So we don't have a nemesis rat, so they're not going to activate. And there's not a peculiar rat out on the board yet, so they're not going to activate. So we're going to look here and we're going to say, okay, first the brown rats are going to activate. They're going to move two towards me, the rat catcher. So now you have to move, when your cards are connected, you have to move through these little connector areas. So I can't just jump across the street here. So this rat here, for example, would have to go one, two. These brown rats here are going to go one. They don't need to move two because they'll stop when they get to me. This one will come in here as well. These two rats, they don't care about the cheese. They're going to go one, two. This one's going to go one, two. We'll go one, two. And that is all of the brown rats. Next, we're going to look at the black rats. And the black rats are going to move towards the cheese. Now, I'm going to go ahead, just to make some room here on this card, I'm going to stand up my rat catcher. Oops, I'm going to knock down my rat catcher. I'm going to stand them up. Usually when I play, I stand them up as much as possible, but trying to get you to see them for the camera. But these rats, all the black rats, are going to move into here. They only move one spot. And there's no other black rats on the board. Now we're going to move over to the white rats. And they also are going to move towards the nearest cheese. Now this rat could go this way, but that's not the nearest cheese. So the white rat here is going to go there. This one's going to go here. This white rat's going to go here, here, and here. So now we finished movement. And we're going to go to springing the traps. So we'll look here, and this says the trap's attack value is equal to the highest level of rat in the target zone. So that's common rats. There's only common rats. So that means we're going to roll two dice and we're going to hit on a four or higher. So in this case, I'm able to kill one of these rats. And I'm gonna take out, ooh, I'm gonna get bit here at the end of this turn. There's a lot of brown rats here. I'm gonna take out one of those rats because I'm gonna have to do it uh, on the next turn. So we'll put those rats on the tally man spot. So this is triggered. Now we're gonna go to this trap. Again, it's gonna roll two dice because there's only common rats there. And we rolled a six and a two. Now that six is, six is a mortal wound, so that would, that would take out one of the black rats, but there's not one there. So we're gonna put that guy here, and that is it on the traps. So I'm gonna go ahead, I clear the traps off as I go, just in case I have multiple traps on the board so I don't get confused. Now we're gonna go here and the rats are gonna bite. So the only rats that bite are, well, <laughs> are gonna be the nemesis rats, some of the peculiar rats, but then the, uh, the brown rats. So in, what you do is in this case, you're gonna count the number of brown rats. So there's three. Are there more rats than I have defense? Yes. So there are three more. You don't take three bites. You're only gonna take one bite from each type of rat. So if there was a nemesis and a peculiar there as well, I could take three wounds, but because there's just the brown rats, I'm only gonna take one. So they bit me and I am down to one health. Finally, you're gonna look here to see are there five rats in any location with cheese? We have three, we have two, and then here we have five. So there are five. Unfortunately, rats will eat cheese even if the rat catcher was there. So in this case, this piece of cheese is now a part of the rat board here. So we'll just set that there. Fortunately, the first piece of cheese does nothing. What happens then with these five rats, because they have consumed the cheese, they are going to go back into the rat board. So that kind of helps us a little bit. Oop, this guy here as well. So I'm gonna lay him back down, shake that up. Now here there's only two, and here there's three, so we're all right there. 
And finally, we are going to spawn rats. So you don't spawn in every spot as before. You're only going to spawn where there's a nest location, which has the little arrows around it, as well as wherever there's a black rat. If there's a black rat, you're going to spawn there as well. If there's three black rats on one square, you're only going to spawn once unless you draw another black rat. It's not like you have to spawn one for each rat there. Believe me, you get enough rats on the board as it is. So let's start. We'll go through the respawns. So we're going to put one here, and that's a black rat. So we're going to draw again from the sack. Okay, we're going to put one here, and then we'll put one over here. That's another black rat. All right, so that would end the rat's turn. Now let's talk about what happens if we ever run out of cheese on the board. So if you ever have less than two pieces of cheese on the board, you need to grow your city. So let's say, for example, let's say the game's moved on a little bit. The rat catcher came into this spot. We captured a few rats in the process. Let's not be crazy. Let's say the rat catcher here, let's say it's my turn, you know, and I had a couple of movements and I rolled a couple of my dice. Let's just say I had two left. Let's say I just went in here and I was able to kill those rats or capture those rats and I got this piece of cheese. Well, the first thing I want to do, maybe I want to work towards updating my defense. Or you know what, I'll go here like I want to do one of these two powers. Let's see, do I want to uh, do a better attack or soothing lullaby? You know, realistically, I'm just going to go to the defense because as this character, I need to build defense quick. But anyway, we only have one uh, magical cheese left. So what do you do? So you're going to grow the town or the city by drawing more township cards based on the card, the township card that the rat catcher is at, they're going to have these Roman numerals here. You see in this case it's two, here's three, here's three. You add that many new cards to the, to the city here. So in this case, I cleared that off. I need to draw two more. Let's say I draw two, so I'll flip this guy here. And you can place it anywhere that works. Uh, let me, I'll put this one here just so that it fits in the shot. And then I'll draw a second one. And we'll put this one here so it fits in the see, Does it fit in the shot better if I do this one? No, not really. Well, let's just say that that's side by side, just so that it kind of fits a little bit better. Or actually, even better yet, let's do it this way. We'll put it over here. That fits, more or less. And then you're going you're gonna to populate those uh, cards. So even if this is the middle of the rat catcher's turn, you're immediately going to populate this, just as we did before. We're going to draw our... Our rats, oh, there's a black one right there. It's a rat's nest. Oops, I drew a black, which is fine because I drew another black as well. And then I drew a white one. Draw one here, here. And then that question mark, let's just draw one of these random question marks and I get another rat's nest. Let's say I drew a peculiar rat. Let's just, so that way we can learn about the peculiar rats and how they perform. So let's say that this was the token that I flipped. So what we'll do in that case is we'll just draw one of these at random. And we will flip here and we have the Mad Ratter. And I'll... So we're going to look for the token that matches the Mad Ratter. And we have it right here. And we are going to put this on that space. And we'll continue on filling out the other card that we drew. And then once we're all set doing this, we continue our rat catcher's turn as though we were in the midst of things. And we will draw one of those. It was another uh, yellow. So put a yellow here. Actually, generally what I'll do too is I'll just leave that there so I know what was there. We'll put that guy there. So now we can continue our turn. Let's say through the course of my turn, I ended up in here. I ended up capturing these three rats. Obviously, I'd have to do some finagling, but let's just say for the sake of argument that this is where we ended our turn. So I put two cheese there. That means I get to upgrade my defense as I took two cheese. So I'm now at a one. And let's just call that the end of my turn. Now let's go ahead and take the rat turn. So before we had just these three cards they all had cheese or were adjacent to me, so all these rats activated. So this is where it's a little bit different. You only activate the cards that are an active township. 
So in this case, an active township is any card, any township card that has a piece of cheese on it, which would be these two here, or any card that the rat catcher is on and the cards adjacent to that. So for example, currently, if the rat catcher is here, the active zones are one, two, three, four. This is not an active zone. So that means we don't move or do anything with the rats here. So we would go ahead and take the rats turns. Now first, again, the nemesis rat goes first, but then the peculiar rat is going to go. In this case here, we'll start with the peculiar rat. It has a four movement and it's gonna go towards the nearest cheese. So this guy will just go whoop, right into here. Now if at any point I am able to defeat this, uh, this peculiar rat, you get this treasure. So I get to take a, a secret token as well as a cheese whenever I want. You notice the other peculiar rats, they have different, uh, different treasures. This one has one of each different potion. I can pick here between those. This one I get a piece of cheese and so on. You get the idea. But now we'll continue on. Next, the, uh, the brown rats would move. So they're gonna move two towards me. Let's start closest to me, it'd be easier that way. So go one, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and we don't touch anything here. And then we would move the white rats and the black rats towards the nearest cheese. We'll start with the black. We're just gonna move one, it's gonna go that way, as will this white rat. I'll just move him too, why not? These guys are gonna come into here. These guys are gonna come into here. Flammo, bingo, boingo. And then if there were any traps on the board, we would spring those traps. And then after that, the rats would bite. And in this case, the brown rats are in here with me. They would bite me. And in, the, in this example, that bite would be the end of our Pied Piper. Let's say that the peculiar rat was in here as well. Just like I had explained before, that peculiar rat would bite me and they bite for a three. So that three beats my one, these three rats beat my one. So even if I had a full health there in, that, in this example, I would take one damage for the mad, the mad ratter because I only have one defense and this is more. And then I would take one because there are three rats, I would take one for that as well. One for the brown rats, one for the peculiar rat, and I would almost be dead. Now, if the brood mother is ever on the board, Let's talk about how the broodmother or how any of the nemesis rats work. They're gonna move first and they're gonna move by a D6. So we would roll this die and in this example they would move four and you would look at what their target is. The broodmother's target is cheese, so the broodmother would move towards the cheese. The other uh, on this side here, the rat king is actually going to move towards the rat catcher and try to get real bitey with the rat catcher. But in this case, the broodmother is just going to go for the cheese. And let's say this was the rat catcher's turn and I wanted to attack the nemesis rat. Like I had mentioned before, I'm gonna to have to roll dice and hit more, equal to or, or more than their defense value. So in this case, if I rolled four dice, I would have to roll four hits, which would be, uh, in this case, my accuracy is four or higher. Now I can upgrade that, let's say even if it was a three plus, let's say I just really upgraded that, I would have to roll a three or higher, and in this case, well, this would be an awesome example. These two hits here would be mortal wounds, so each one of those would do a wound to this rat, boop, boop. But this one is one hit, it doesn't break their defense. I would have had to have had, like let's say this was a whole bunch of, you know, fours and fives. Let me see it. Like if I rolled this, that's four, that equals four, that would allow me to do one damage. So the nemesis rats are a lot more difficult to kill. So that is a quick overview on how to play the rat catcher, but now I'm gonna take you back up top and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the game. All right guys, that was the rat catcher. Now please keep in mind that everything that you saw there was a prototype copy, so make sure you check out the Kickstarter page just in case anything has changed between the prototype and the final release. I want to start by talking about the components and the art. Now again, that was a prototype copy, so the components may be tweaked and changed, but as far as those components in the prototype, they were really well done. The rats themselves, they were nice and cut out re really nicely. Um, all of the, both the nemesis and the rat catcher meeples were outlined to fit the art. There was a sticker on them, and if that was the final release as far as components go, I would be totally okay with that. So I'm definitely looking forward to see what the final copy is going to look like. 
So components in the prototype, really well done. Keep an eye on the Kickstarter to see what the final is going to look like. But now let's get to that art. So first of all, the art is what brought me into the Rat Catcher. I wasn't familiar with the game, and before I even knew it was going to be a game, I saw the art. Matthew Aslan is the, the creator, the brainchild, the artist behind the Rat Catcher. And I saw his art on Facebook, and I was instantly drawn, and I thought it looked great. It was very moody, very, um, it just, it felt kind of old-worldly. I, I got the vibe of like an old-school London, just in the art of the uh, of the different rats, or of the rat catchers. And just kind of the way the, the drawings are made, they're very sketchy and, uh, you know, black and white. I, I was just, I was a big fan of it. Uh, I fell in love with the art. And that helped me dive into the theme of the game. I feel like the art adds a lot of credence. You feel like you're walking around as a rat catcher dealing with some kind of plague and you want to get rid of those rats and you feel the stress of that as the game goes on. But I love the art. I can't say enough great things about the art. So let's talk about the gameplay of the game. Now, when I first started going through the instructions on the game, I was a little apprehensive because I thought, oh, there's a lot that I'm gonna have to keep in mind because each of the rat catchers have a different power. We have these different options of, you know, what the yellow potion does, what the red potion or pink potion does rather. And then you have your different nemesis rats and they're gonna perform a little bit differently. But after the first playthrough, it was really seamless. You follow that little flow card, you know what moves you could do as a rat catcher. You understand the different special powers and upgrades each one has, and then you play each nemesis this rat differently so you you just it clicks and the games really start to smooth sail from there and the game duration can really be uh, some of the games I've lost fairly quickly uh, other games have taken me longer to lose and I say that jokingly uh, I have won this game I've played a lot of games of this and I'll get to that when I talk about replayability um, but uh, your games could be quicker, could be longer, depending on that randomness, but it's okay because the randomness works out in the game. It just, it helps to build on the theme and it doesn't feel, to me anyway, it's not a randomness that I get tired of. I don't like randomness in games for the sake of randomness where you think, this is kind of lazy, the designer of the game could have maybe thought of something differently than whatever mechanic they have. But the way the randomness works in this game where you don't know what kind of rats you're getting, it kind of feels campaign-ish, like you're moving through this town or the city and each of the different townships, and you don't know what rat's gonna be around the next corner. You don't know if you're walking into a good situation. So I feel like the mechanics work in that nature, the randomness works in that nature of the game. I really want to talk about the replayability because you could tell based on the mechanics, I kind of touched on it a little bit, but this game is very, very replayable. You have, with the prototype anyway, there were four different rat catchers and two different nemesis rats and a, a handful of different peculiar rats. So the gameplay is always different. You know, you're playing to a different style, you're playing against a different style. You don't know how the townships are going to work out as you're dealing that. So the game feels fresh as you play it over and over again. And the game, again, isn't very long, or it cannot go too long. You can, you can lose in 15 minutes. Um, some games go a little bit longer, half hour. I've, I've had a game that's gone maybe for, you know, 35, 40, 45 minutes, depending on your luck and how you're, you're doing. And I just feel like, though, the game doesn't ever feel old. I've sat down and I've played a game and I've gone, oh, I was so close. And then I sat down and I immediately played again. I just you know, cleared off all the components and jumped right back into it. And I had what I felt was a different experience. Now, granted, yeah, the game, is, it's the same idea. You're moving your rat catcher around, you're catching rats, but there's such a replayable nature to the game because not only do you have those different powers from each rat catcher and each nemesis rat and everything, but you also have that, oh, I was so close. I think I could do it this time. And I liken it to like a Friday in the sense that if you're familiar with that game, you're gonna get beat down, you're gonna get beat down, but you're so close to winning, you're gonna try it one more time. Because in this game, in the rat catcher, you are gonna get bitten by rats, and you're gonna lose. You're, you're just, the rats are very bitey, and they're gonna bite you, and they're gonna knock your health down like that. Um, but also there are, are times when you're racing for that last piece of cheese, and they might be way up there on the cheese, and you're almost, you know, maybe a cheese or two away from winning the game, and it becomes a nail biter. So based on that, for me, there was always a desire to play the game again. I really love how you can upgrade your rat catcher differently from game to game. So maybe you want to try a different strategy of using more of the yellow potion than the pink potion, or maybe you want to try to beef up your offense or your defense. You can try these different things, and it's really neat to watch how it plays out and the decisions that you make. 
Maybe you make a decision and say, uh, oh, I unlocked the pink potion and I really should have unlocked the yellow potion. And because of that, I lost like that. Other times you're gonna say, that last time I lost because I got bit a lot, so I'm right away gonna beef up my defense. And I just, I absolutely love that. I love the upgrading nature of it. Now, all in all, I absolutely adore this game. I feel like the theme was very fresh, very unique. I love the art style, and I love the, the gameplay. The whole experience, it was a very in-depth, I felt like I was in a campaign when I was playing. I, I just loved watching the world build out before me, watching the city and the township grow. Uh, watching how the rats are gonna react. I just, I love the game. I cannot say enough good things about this game. I'm always looking for a solo game, so when I had the opportunity to check out this prototype, uh, I, I really took it and looked forward to it, and I was, this way exceeded my expectations of the game. I absolutely love this game. I'm really excited for this game to launch on Kickstarter. It should be live now by the time this review is uploaded. Uh, so definitely, definitely go check it out. I know I will be, and I again, I cannot recommend this game enough. If you're looking for a solo game, you're looking for something that's unique, that's quick and fun, uh, with a, a little bit of frustration put in there, because you know you don't want to win every game. It's nice to have that oh moment where it's oh so close. I uh, can't recommend this game enough. I highly recommend you check out this Kickstarter. But that's it. I'm Lee with Geek City USA. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and checking out our review on the Rat Catcher. Please subscribe if you don't already to our channel and check it out if you're looking for other reviews and playthroughs. We do have a couple of playthroughs of the Rat Catcher that will be going live in just a few days. So be sure to check those out, especially if you're interested in this game. Again, I cannot recommend it enough. But I'm Lee with Geek City USA and we will see you next time. Cheers.